So what's up guys and welcome to something a little bit different and this is a heavy bag reps workout. Now what do I mean by that? What I mean is you don't need a timer. This is all about the number of punches you're going to be putting in. So this is basically something that's going to help you build that motor pathway to your punches. It's going to help you learn but also it's going to be a good cardio workout, it's going to be a good muscular workout and it's going to help you push those mental boundaries. So without further ado, let's get on and look at what we're doing today. First things first, equipment that you're going to need. Some simple gloves, 12 ounces to 16 will protect your hands enough for this. Most gyms will have them for you to borrow, so don't be afraid to ask. If not, you can get any old relatively inexpensive ones. I've got these Venoms, I think they're called the Venom Elite or something like that. I'll link them in the description below. Simple Amazon buy, so check these out, I could recommend them. Number two is footwear. Make sure that you have something on your feet that's going to give you the support that you need. You do not want to be wearing running trainers. If that's all you've got, do it barefoot. That's absolutely fine, but if you want to invest in something, Cheap and cheerful, which I've used and has lasted me a long time, some of these bad boys. So these are some relatively inexpensive Lonsdale boots. Again, I'll link them in the description. They cost around 30, 35 pounds. The last pair I had lasted me literally three to four years. I can't remember what, because I had them that bloody long. So this is specifically a heavy bag routine, and I'm gonna show you why. This may look like a relatively heavy bag, but if we give it a little shot, you can see how much movement there is in that bag. Now, because we're gonna be doing punching in numbers, we need something that's gonna offer some resistance. Enter Big Red. If we hit Big Red, it doesn't go anywhere and that's exactly what we want. We want our punches to be landing nice and solidly and transferring all our energy into the bag. If the bag swings or moves or is too thin and we miss, that's when we risk hurting ourselves. So the workout itself, it's called tens. What does that mean? It's simple, we're gonna do punches building up to 10. It doesn't mean 10 punches, you're gonna be doing much, much more. But we're going to go from one to 10. We're gonna go from jabs to hooks to combinations. Now this isn't about time, this is about numbers. So if you get tired, you suck it up, you reset, and you just keep driving through. This is gonna be great for pushing through those mental barriers. Often, the body can keep going, but the mind quits. This type of training will help you push through those mental barriers and let you know that the body can keep going even when you feel tired. Additionally, this is gonna help you build those motor pathways for learning to throw those punches correctly. Because this one, again, is not only about time, it's not about speed either. So, we're looking to get some good connections with the bag, we're looking to think about what we're doing with every punch, and we're looking to get better as time goes on. So the way tens works is simply this. It's numbers of punches. We're gonna start on the left side, then move to the right side. So each one is done individually. You're gonna start with a single jab, then you're gonna do two jabs, then three, all the way up to 10. Then switch into the right side, we're gonna start with a straight right, one, all the way up to 10. Then we go hook, hook, and then we go into the combinations of just one, twos. So you're gonna be throwing a lot of punches here, but what I want you to do is reset with every single punch. I don't want you just throwing like this, nice and short and sharp. You want to be extending through with every punch, resetting every time. That's gonna help you build those motor pathways and good habits, so that when you do the bag work that's free and timed, and you're moving around, your natural instinct is gonna to be to throw that punch correctly and keeping that guarded hand up. Now, if you're new to the bag work, or you just need a little bit of a reminder, I'm constantly reminding myself to do things. That's the only way we learn. Let's just start with the foot placement and how we should be throwing these punches. So, taking a look at the feet. Front foot wants to be planted, back foot wants to be slightly elevated. We're gonna be rotating our hips through the punches, and we drive through that back foot. So we want to avoid leaving the floor at any time. A lot of people have a tendency to jump whilst punching. So we want to stay planted, we're gonna roll through. I'm right-handed, so my left side is my lead side. If you happen to be southpaw, obviously your right side would be your lead side, and that would be your lead leg. But for me, left leg is a lead leg. From here, I'm going to keep my hands up high, keeping my guard, and you can see my left shoulder is further forward than my right shoulder. So we're not standing square on. From here, what we're going to do is we're going to throw the punch out, we're gonna roll the hips through, we're gonna keep this right hand up, and then we're going to return back in a straight line to the chin. These are the mechanics that we want to start building in and making a good habit. So I'm making sure that I maintain my distance because at this point I'm probably a little bit tired. So just making sure that distance stays and I'm not stepping too close. At any point, if you do step in too close, just reset and stand back out. It should go something like this. So moving on to the straight right. This is a much bigger shot. So it's gonna travel more distance, it's gonna be a little bit slower. So again, don't try and go too quickly. We're gonna keep that left side forward, not standing too square. We're gonna keep the left guard up this time, and we're gonna roll through with that big right punch, and then bring it back to the chin. So like I said, this is going to be slower, it has to travel further. I really want to roll my hips through, driving off that back leg. So the right one, 
keeping that distance, making sure that you've got that range coming through, bang, bringing that left hand up to guard. So as you come through, get in the habit of just popping that left hand up. So when we're throwing them in multiples, slow it down, make it count. And you can see how I'm not throwing that too quickly. I'm resetting, I'm thinking about my foot position. If I lose foot position or I wobble off, don't worry about it. Just reset and start again. Hooks. Now there's a couple of different ways of throwing hooks, but we're gonna concentrate on the close and personal hook. If you're further away and you're on the bag work, just a quick one, make sure that you are rolling the knuckles over as you throw from distance. We're gonna stay quite close to the bag, this kind of distance. The reason I want you to stay close to the bag is to reduce tweaking the shoulder or hurting your hands. So foot positioning always stays the same. Front foot planted, back foot up, rolling through the hips. Now with the hooks, we can give a little bit of a wind up here. We're just gonna, for the left hook, drop, and then we're gonna come up, keeping the elbow high, and hook through. So we want to just develop a bit of an exaggerated habit of bringing that elbow up and high. You'll see a lot of guys when they shadow box and you see them, they just bring the elbow around nice and tight. That's what we want to do here. Obviously, once you get a bit more fluid and you get a bit more technical with things, you don't need to have the elbow as high, but again, exaggeration helps develop that motor pathway. With the hook, I also want you to stay at head height. What a lot of people do here is they have the habit of hitting at around about the neck, because it's just a little bit lazy. As you get tired, the hands will drop. So try and focus on a point on the bag that is head height. From there, you're just going to roll in, boom, hit that punch. As soon as it lands, you're going to bring it back to the chin. Remember, we want to whip through with the hips. So give it a real nice little and spin on that back foot. Really drive through, push the hips all the way around. Again, slow it down, make them singular punches, resetting defenses each time. Now if you're like me, one of your hooks will feel more comfortable than the other. For me, my left hook's very natural, but the right hook seems to feel a little disconnected because it's traveling further. With the left hook, I tend to turn my hand over and really bring it in. With the right, I tend to like to punch up close with the hand like this rather than this. So I'll come in with the right hook like so. For me, it just connects better and it feels more natural, but if keeping the hand turned over feels good to you, that's gonna help you keep the elbow up. So whichever way you do it, just think about remembering to keep that elbow nice and high, keeping the other side guarded, as always, to keep the elbow nice and high. Noticing as I throw the right, the left comes up to guard that counter punch side, so. So by now, the sweat should be flowing, you should be feeling it in the lungs, and we're gonna move on to a one-two combination. Nice and simple. So for this, you're gonna be doing one punch straight after the other. You're gonna be coming in with a jab, then rolling back to with the straight right. So you'll have seen this often, a lot of people do it on pads and with the mitts, but what we don't want to start doing is those habits of bringing the hands down and rolling them under, or starting to stunt our punches. So again, slow it down, really reach, pop, pop, reset, pop, pop, reset. Now we're gonna be going one, two counts as one rep. To stop with confusion of the numbers, simply count your right punch. So with every one, two, this is gonna count as one. So it'll be one, two, one, Three, make sense? It looks something like this. Always keep the hands up as well. As you get tired, your hands are gonna wanna drop. So don't let that happen. So here we go. One, two, three. Always counting that right hand. So now when I get to four, it's actually eight punches. And I'm only gonna count the right. One, two, three, four. So by the time you get up to 10, you're actually gonna be doing 20 punches. So there you have a nice variable that is an untimed, great workout using the heavy bag that's gonna help you build that motor pathway. It's gonna seriously work the muscles of the triceps, the back, the core. Make sure that you're driving through your legs. Make sure that guard stays up. Don't let the hands drop. Break those mental boundaries. 